people, LP2000, right back at you with another video. Yes, welcome back to Leslie Chambers Kaiju Reviews on behalf of Summer Kaiju. And I'm your host, obviously, Leslie P. Chambers. And today we're taking a look at another great X Plus figure release. Yes, I got this guy late last year, 2018. One of the last few pieces, pieces I was able to acquire late last year. And it was a great um, note to go out on in 2018. And today we're taking a look at the S Plus 30 centimeter Godzilla 1967 Rick Exclusive Edition from the awesome, great, campy show of Kaiju Flick, Son of Godzilla. And as you can see, I have the beautiful figures here, as well as the box here. And you now we do things around here. Let's get into the box before we get into the figure. And yes, this is the box. You know, just a, and you know me, I love the 30, 30 centimeter boxes. Um, more so the Sakai's um, to a certain extent, but I love the regular 30, 30 centimeter boxes with the great artwork. You have Godzilla in the front, his beautiful face in the background right here. Godzilla 1967, the yellow sticker on the side signifying that it is a Rick. And yes, that's pretty much it with the box. You know, that's it. I'm going to keep it here for display purposes because this really is a big box for a really big Godzilla, and I'll talk about that in a few seconds. But yes, this is the 1967 Godzilla from Son of Godzilla. Not exactly the most beloved suit in the franchise, but I'll get to that later on. Um, but for me, I love this suit. I fall into the camp where I absolutely adore and I love this suit, uh, which I will also explain later on towards the tail end of the video. Um, not much of a big, long backstory with this figure. This was really a shocker release, really. Um, it just came out of nowhere. It came out of nowhere. Um, we first saw pictures of it, or it was announced in October, and it just got released, like I said, late last year, um, December, like the last couple weeks going in, um, in, in December, um, going towards the new year. And once again, we had no idea this thing was coming. That's what S Plus does, you know. Aside from the fact that when they go to these Japanese model shows, you know, in Japan, and they showcase all the products that they got coming, you know. There are times every now and then, because sometimes they kind of they kind of like announce stuff towards like the like the beginning of the month. Sometimes they fluctuate between the beginning of the month, the middle of the month. Sometimes they wait until the last of the month to announce stuff. Um, but this was one of those releases where you wake up one morning and if you check their website or if you go on the S Plus Collectors Facebook Club or group on Facebook, um, you'll get the inside news of what may, be, what may be coming. And this was a shocker. You know, I, I remember waking up one morning, like I said, in October, and just seeing pictures all over the Facebook group of this guy. And I was like, wow, this was awesome. And I got to give a huge shout out to uh, my fellow um, Godzilla YouTuber and great friend, Matt, Matt Jacobson, but you may know him better as Gojira 851 um, because he, like me, is a huge fan of the, of the 67 Godzilla. And it's like whenever him, he and I would talk, and I would ask him, like, what are you most looking forward to from X Plus? What do you want to see X Plus, X Plus make in the future for his figures? And almost every time I ask him that question, he, he, always, he, he always tells me, I want a 30 centimeter 67 Godzilla. And every time he says that, I'm right along there with him. Because once again, I love this suit. Godzilla 1967 from Sonic Godzilla 30 centimeter. Um, and on top of that, when they announced it, um, the standard just comes with Godzilla, obviously. But the Rick comes with not one, but two minions. Yes, two minions. Um, the more mature... <laughs> That's kind of an oxymoron for Minya. <laughs> um, the bigger version of Minya as well as his infant form, you know. And it also comes with a couple set... Excuse me, it comes with an extra set of um, interchangeable arms for Godzilla. The reason for the arms because it ties in with the minions. Um, there's a famous production still of Mania sitting on top of Godzilla's neck from Son of Godzilla. Now, it didn't happen in the film. We didn't, we didn't see that in the film, but it's like a famous production still or or just a backstage photo of Mania on top of Godzilla's neck. Now, what you can do is like, because this Mania, as well as the infant one, um, is made of squishy soft vinyl. Uh, it's made of more so soft vinyl, not the hard vinyl. So you're able to position Minion on the back of Godzilla's head or neck like this. And these arms, you can inter interchange with these arms right here to kind of like hold Minion's ankles in place to um, to hold Minion on top of uh, to top of the back of Godzilla's head, which I'll showcase later on when I get up close and personal. Um, but, but to be perfectly honest, I don't intend to display my Minion like that on Godzilla's head like that. But it's nice to have that option. Um, so between the arms, the minions, 
this set was really under like maybe $215, which ain't bad. Three X plus figures. I don't care if they are minions, but still, three X plus figures for like $215. Because I think to my door, I think I paid for all of it, like maybe like $250. You know, whatever, 250 shipped, and it's like the final payment or whatever. So you would think that with all this, that 250 would have been the asking price for it, excluding shipping and other fees that you had to pay, you know, to get them to get a Rick exclusive. But the fact that this figure set could really, it really in essence is a figure set if you go for the Rick. Um, 215, that's not bad. And honestly, I had to go Rick on this one. Because I like Minya. Actually, I, I love Minya. As a matter of fact, Minya doesn't bother me. Um, so that offends some of y'all. I'm sorry. Well, actually, I'm not sorry. Because I I mean, I love the C7 suit. And I love Minya. And I'm not ashamed to admit that. And I know there's a lot of folks that can't stand this suit. They can't stand Minya. They can't stand the fact that Godzilla had a son. You know? But for all those people that hate on that, there's a lot of, a lot of people that actually love this. And I'm one of those people. Um, so that's pretty much it with the backstory with this figure. Once again, a solid release of the year 2018. Um, it was a um, great last note to go out on. Once again, like I said, this is one of the last pieces, um, X plus figures that I acquired during that year. And I couldn't be happier, you know. Um, great, great figure release. Great, great figure release. And that's pretty much it with the backstory. So you know we do things right here. Let's get up close and personal with this awesome figure. The X Plus 30 centimeter Godzilla 1967 Rick Exclusive Edition from Son of Godzilla. As a matter of fact, um, let's bring up the 25 centimeter um, for comparison and we'll go into the um, review in that direction. All right, let's go. Okay, folks, here we are up close and personal with the 30 centimeter Godzilla 1967. I also have his 25 centimeter counterpart. Um, just to give you an indication of how these figures look together. And I would have to say, um, because in, I think, and I, I could be wrong on this, I think the last time that we got a 30 centimeter upgrade of an already existing Godzilla figure of himself was in 2017 when they brought out the 30 centimeter Godzilla 1975. And that was, a, in my opinion, that was a um, cool upgrade from the 25 centimeter 75. The 25 centimeter 75 was kind of like off in certain respects. The 30 centimeter, in my opinion, this is just my opinion, I think the 30 centimeter 75 was, was a better upgrade. Now, it wasn't perfect, don't get me wrong. There were a couple issues with it. But I think that it was um, a great, great upgrade. There are a lot of folks that, that may not agree with that. Um, um, a lot of folks, I'm sure, are not really fond of that version of Godzilla, at least the 75, the 30 centimeter version. But in my opinion, I think that version was um, was a cool upgrade from the, from the um, 25 centimeter. With this one, this is a great upgrade from um, the 25 centimeter version of the 67. Now, mind you, the 25 centimeter ain't bad either. You know, it's not bad. Um, I'll talk about the distinct uh, differences later on. But as you can see, it's pretty much the same in a way. Um, tree bark light skin, charcoal gray skin on, on both Godzillas. You know, they got pretty much the uh, same color scheme um, on the on the uh, 30 as they do with the 25. Um, the sculpts are pretty much not exactly the same, but still somewhat similar. You know, um, I had no issue, honestly. I have no issue with the 25 centimeter um, 67 Godzilla. Um, as you can see, also, bone white colors on the uh, dorsal plates, pretty much the same. You know what I'm saying? Pretty much the same right there. Um, the, the structure and the sculpts of the dorsal plates are pretty much the same. That's one of the things that a lot of folks kind of like criticize with this Godzilla because it comes with odd, crude looking dorsal plates. Um, but I happen to think that's part of the charm of this version of Godzilla is, is the dorsal plates. The placement of them, you know, mind you, it's not the typical Godzilla structure where you have like a small dorsal plate here, a medium sized dorsal plate here, the bigger dorsal plate towards the uh, like the middle of his back. But in this one, in this version, the big play is like towards the lower end of his back. Kind of like the 84. The 84 kind of like has the same thing going on. Uh, but the placement and the um, and the sculpt and the paint job on the dorsal plates are really, really good. You know, especially, you know, I mean, both are awesome. You know what I mean? Um, but they were able to convert, co convert this into a 30 centimeter and it looks great. It really does look great. Um... Let's see what else. 
the tails are pretty much somewhat long in a way, kind of long. And um, this one is, is thicker. The 30 centimeter is thicker. Um, the 25 is a little bit slimmer, obviously, um, because of a smaller, you know, smaller structure of the figure. Um, but as you can see, they look really well together, you know. Um, and I think that X Plus did a great job with this. They did a great job with this upgrade. Um, unlike the 75, where I'm sure a lot of folks, like I mentioned earlier, wasn't really too happy with that upgrade, you know, whatever. But I can honestly say that this is a great upgrade from the 67. And honestly, excuse me, the 25 centimeter um, 67 Godzilla. And that's the thing. This one didn't require much of an upgrade to begin with, in my opinion, because it looks good on its own. Now, the biggest difference, in my opinion, between both Godzillas is the face. And that's the only criticism that I have with the 25. The face is kind of off with the 25 centimeter version. You know, now it's not perfect and it's not like ugly to a certain extent. Well, I, well then again, <laughs> I know a lot, of, a lot of folks tend to call this Godzilla um, design ugly, but let's face it, people. Godzilla ain't Mothra, you know what I mean? Godzilla is not, you know, a beautiful monster like Mothra. Godzilla's not gonna be winning any kind of beauty contest, you know? Um, of course, some Godzilla designs look better than the other ones. I get that, but but still, you know, this is par for the course with Godzilla, you know? He's not gonna be, like I said, winning any beauty contest. But in this version in particular, I would say that the only flaw with the 25 centimeter was the face. The face, like I said, was kind of off. But they got it right with the uh, 30. They were able to get it right with the 30. Now, early pictures of what we saw um, of the 30, you know, with his mouth open like that, um, kind of like looked like that his jaw was kind of like bigger, bigger than what it should be. And it kind of came off like that. What's that character's name from Family Guy with that big jaw? That or, or His jaw, his lower jaw is bigger than his upper jaw. And he kind of talks like this. You know, it kind of like it kind of like had that going on, but having the figure in hand, the jaw is really perfect proportion to his upper jaw, and I like the fact that he's roaring in this pose. You know, as well as his arms. Now his arms, as well as his arms on the twenty-five, are kind of pretty much the same as you can see. You know, they're kind of you know the same. You know, um, also it really um, really displays how small his hands were. And I've heard that over the years with the with the um, 67 Godzilla, but I didn't really pay attention to it until recently, until I saw the film. And now looking at these figures, especially the uh, the 30, he really did have small hands. <laughs> um, I, I, you know what? As far as like small hands is one thing, but he didn't have like menacing claws like he would have in like 64 or 84 or something like that. Um, but I think for this version of Godzilla, it worked. It worked. And S Plus has done a great, great job with this. The size of this guy, he's at least 33 centimeters tall, which is like, what, 13, 13 inches tall. Um, and I've seen a lot of folks wonder why did they make this version of Godzilla so big, at least this figure is so big. Um, from what I gather, because we all know that in this suit, um, Haru Nakajima wasn't playing Godzilla. He only played Godzilla in the water scenes in the beginning and when Godzilla comes to the island finally in the film in the water scenes in the 66 suit. That was Nakajima. But the, I think they hired, I think, a baseball player to play this version of Godzilla because Godzilla he was taller and they wanted somebody to fit the suit and they wanted to have Godzilla really big in comparison to Mania. That's why Godzilla has, you know, somewhat of a bigger stature in this film. And I'm glad that X Plus honestly has reflected that in the sculpt. So that's why Godzilla is so big in the film. And that's why S Plus took it, took it upon themselves to make this figure bigger than what the normal 30 centimeter um, figure would be. And I like that. I like how S Plus put that much realism, not only with the sculpt, the paint job, and just the overall des design of the, of the suit, but it went as far as go with size accuracy also. But as you can see, paint job, face, the dorsal plates, the tail, you know, the claws and the and his toes, all bone white color. They have done a great job with this 30 centimeter upgrade of the 67 Godzilla. I could even be happier. You know, like I said, if you had the 25 centimeter, you know, there's not much of a big, big difference in terms of how this how the figure looks in certain respects. Like I said, the biggest difference, like I said, is maybe the face, 
you know. But other than that, the paint job, the overall sculpt of the figures, they're pretty much almost the same. Um, so, but either way, I think S Plus did a great job with this 30 centimeter upgrade of the 67 Godzilla. And if you have this figure, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And if you want this figure or on the fence about getting this figure, get off that fence. Even if you had the 25, if you love this version of Godzilla, trust me, you need to have this version in your collection. I would even venture to say because of the 25 centimeter, um, the 25 centimeter 67 Godzilla was kind of off in the face. I know a lot of folks tend to look at the Marmot Monster Heaven um, 1967 Godzilla as like the best version of that version of Godzilla. But I have to say this, in my opinion, is the best version of the 1967 Godzilla. You know what I mean? So, yeah, that's awesome. So I'm glad I got this figure, you know, whatever. And that's pretty much it with the uh, sculpt detail and the size and everything, they done a great job. Outstanding job S Plus did with this version of Godzilla. All right, let's look at the, you know what, let's bring up the Minions. Let's, let's, let's bring up the Minions right fast. And here you go. That's Mania. Yeah, I know. <laughs> look at this. Ain't this kind of funny, but I have a Minion almost the same size as Godzilla, so let's bring this down to get him out the shot. But okay, here you go. And these are the Manias. Yes, these are the Manias. This one right here. Oh man, this guy. This this guy is awesome. As a matter of fact, I seen a lot of folks that were saying that were um, who was trying to get this figure or didn't really want to pay extra for the Rick. They were going to folks and say, "Hey, if you're going for the Rick, if you don't want the little smaller Mania, um, um, holler at me and I'll buy them off of you." Um, but they done a great job with both the Manias. And, and like I said. The fact that they're both made of a softer vinyl is really, really awesome. You know, they've done a great job with the paint job, you know, whatever. It's pretty much the same as the vinyl version of Mania. Um, Cause what they did with the Rick version, all they did was cause this, this version of Mania, I believe was released in 2010. And this was the Rick version for that figure, you know? So what they did, they just took the, basically the Rick version of Mania, combined it with this version of Godzilla to make the Rick um, edition of this figure, you know, and that's what happened. And I think they they did they did a great job. Once again, it's made of squishy soft vinyl. That way, you can at least place me on the back of Godzilla's head. But like I said, I don't intend on doing that that much. But he does look good when you do attach me on on the back of Godzilla's head, um, or his neck, I should say. It does look good. Um, but I like to display my Minias like this. They've done a great job with both Minias. More of a darker brown on the infant one. You know, typical, I guess, colors of the of the, of the more the more mature version, and I mean that loosely, <laughs> because he didn't he didn't grow <laughs> beyond the straw. Well, no, beyond Godzilla's Revenge, he's pretty much stayed the same height throughout all three films, which is kind of perplexing. Um, but it's more of a lighter, I'd say, lighter grayish color with some highlight of browns on his sternum and his legs or whatever to give more of a lifelike uh, um, appearance onto the figure. As well as Godzilla, there's highlights all over his body too to give him more of a lifelike presence. Um, but aside from that, the minions look really, really awesome. And honestly, this was the only way for me to, to get this figure. I had to go Rick on this, you know? So this is awesome. Um, I love this figure set. Once again, for $215 for three quality figures, that's amazing. That really is amazing. So that's pretty much it. So let's do a couple size comparisons and we'll wrap this review up with my thoughts of the 67 Godzilla. Let's go with the first size comparison. Okay, folks, this is the first size comparison and I know that these two have never, ever, ever been in a film together. They have never crossed paths. They have never come across each other. But I still feel this would be a great, interesting matchup. And alongside the 30 centimeter Godzilla 1967, I have the 30 centimeter Rick's Exclusive Edition of Gauss 1967 from the classic kaiju film Gamera vs. Gauss. Now, I want to put these two together because obviously they're both monsters that came from films that came out in the year of 1967. And Gauss is arguably um Gamera's number one villain at least in my eyes he is and I always wonder what would have happened if Godzilla would have faced off against Gauss you know that would be an interesting um 
matchup. But now that I have both 30 centimeter versions of the monsters, I want to put them together and see how they fare. Now, normally Gauss will be able to stand on his own, and he and he can really. Um, but I got my hands on a 30 centimeter fire rodan last year, and it came with the stands that Gauss is on right now. And I figured, you know what? Let me try and see if Gauss is able to be able to um, um, sit on top of Rodan stands. And as you can see, he does. He does. He actually uh, stands up really, really, really well. And he looks really good. Looks like he's flying towards Godzilla. Like he's about to, you know, you know, uh, fire his beam at Godzilla or something. But it would have been interesting to see these versions of Godzilla and Gauss go at it, you know. Because um, Gauss was a very ferocious monster and a great, great fighter. Um, Godzilla was a great fighter and son of Godzilla also, but um, it would have been nice and interesting to see what would have happened if these two got together. Um, but that's the um, great thing about having figures like this. You can put random figures together and create fantasy matchups. And, you know, that's what I like to do every now and then. But this is a really, really interesting matchup. It really would have been interesting to see what would have happened if Godzilla faced off against Gauss. Maybe you can pipe down in the comment section and let me know what, what you think would happen if Gauss would have came across Godzilla at some point in time. And I find it very interesting in 1967, Asia was not the place to be in 1967 because so many kaiju flicks came out that year. You know, Son of Godzilla, like I said, Gamma versus Gauss, King Kong Escapes, um, Yangri came out in uh, Korea. Gappa, the tri triumphant or tribibian monster, came out that year. Um, Ultra Seven, um, the X from Outer Space. All these kaiju productions came out in that year. Like I said, Asia, Japan in particular, was not the place to be because you know, at least around the area of Asia, because you know, God. It, I find it very interesting that all the um, um, kaiju projects that happened that year. Um, happened in different areas of Japan, uh, probably at different times. I, you know, I would assume Godzilla was off in the islands at Salgale Island with his own adventure. Gamera and Gauss, you know, they battled in uh, Nagoya. Um, King Kong escapes. King Kong traveled to Tokyo and fought Mechanic Kong. I think Gappa, I think attacked Tokyo. I think I'm not really sure. But it's just funny that all these things happened in somewhat different areas of Japan. Once again, Asia was not the place to be in 1967. But the point is, I makes me wonder what would have happened if Gauss fought Godzilla. Once again, pipe down in the comment section. Let me know what you think would have happened if Gauss would have fought Godzilla. So let's go with one more size comparison. And I'll wrap this review up with my thoughts of, of the 67 Godzilla as a suit as a whole. All right, let's go with the next and last size comparison. Okay, folks, this is the last size comparison. And alongside the 30 centimeter Godzilla 1967, I also have his children, <laughs> the Mature Mania and the Infant Mania. And I also have all their monster co-stars from this epic film of Son of Godzilla, the three Kamakuras, the 25 centimeter, as well as the main antagonist of the film, the 25 centimeter Kamunga. And as you can see, they look really well together. Also, I got the Blu-ray right here. Get this Blu-ray. This Blu-ray is so awesome. Um, it doesn't have English subtitles or English language, but it does have Japanese language and Japanese uh, subtitles. But if you've been watching these films as long as I have, you pretty much know what's going on. So you don't really need to really understand like the language, honestly. And it has so much special features and uh, picture qualities in such pristine condition. So I highly recommend these Blu-rays. You can find them on AmazonJapan.com or, or eBay or whatever. Just don't pay too much for them. They're probably going like around 30 or 40 bucks a piece. But I highly recommend these Blu-rays. But as you can see, these figures look well together. You know, um, that's one of the main issues I really had with the 25 centimeter. Um, in comparison to the other figures, I, I kind of felt that the 25 centimeter um, 1967 Godzilla was a little bit too small in comparison to the other monsters. Um, I always thought that Kamakuras was too big in comparison to that version of Godzilla. But to me, I think the 30 centimeter version works. He kind of works better, even though he may be a little bit slightly bigger than what he should be, just a little bit. But I think he fits this um, overall setup better than the 25 centimeter version, but that's just my opinion. Um, that's pretty much it for the size comparisons. As you can see, this is an awesome setup. And look forward to this review, excuse me, this video 
um, in, the, in the future um, devoted to X-Plus setups, devoted to Son of Godzilla. And then I'll talk more about the film and blah, blah, blah. But with the commentary portion of this video, I'm just going to talk about the, the 67 suit as a whole. But once again, look forward to this um, video in the future. X-Plus setups devoted, devoted to uh, Son of Godzilla. And as you can see, these figures look, look well together and I can't wait to do that video as well. All right, so let's wrap this review up. Okay, folks, I'm back, and let's wrap up this review of the X-Plus 30cm Rick Exclusive Edition of the Godzilla 1967 from Son of Godzilla. And as I mentioned earlier, this suit is not exactly the most beloved or highly favorable um, suit in the franchise, and I get it. I get it. There are a lot of people that find this suit to be grotesque. There are a lot of people that find this suit to be repulsive. There are a lot of people that find this suit to be ugly. And they just can't stand this suit. And I can understand that because I feel the same way somewhat about the anime Godzilla. And there are a lot of people that really can't get into this fun movie because they can't get behind the design. I get that. You know what I mean? Because like I said, I feel the same way about anime Godzilla. Even though I know eventually I will get I will get a I will get around to watching those films, but the design is throwing me off where if I'm not invested into the character or into the into the design, I'm not going to move it. It's built around it. So I can understand from a certain standpoint why a lot of people are not into this design or into this movie. I get that. But I am in the camp where I absolutely adore this design. I love this suit. Um, there's one main reason, but there's so many great reasons for me personally. Um, it's just, it's just a great, great suit in my opinion, even though it's a departure from the previous suits from the show period. Yes, it doesn't have the main look and nature of the 66. It doesn't have the sinister nature look of the 64. It doesn't have the menacing slash playful look of the 62 or the sheer prehistoric ferocity of the 54. But I think for the story that was told, this Godzilla design was perfect for the story that was built around it. You know, um, so many things, like I said, I love about this suit. Um, even in the film, you know, even when they introduced the suit in the film, I have to say it was kind of semi-clever um, for um, the producers or the, the director, June Fukuda, the director of Son of, Son of Godzilla, I like how he was able to kind of like introduce the suit because remember in the in the film in the beginning um, and even when Godzilla comes to the island finally in the film they used the sixty six suit you know for the water scenes but yet when they when Godzilla finally arrives on land when you first see the suit or at least the, at least this suit he's kind of hidden behind some trees so you couldn't really get a good look at the suit. Only when he attached the, uh, the weather headquarters is when you get a good look at the suit. And you're like, ah, okay. But they try to make it somewhat seamless by like trying to hide it behind the jungle when Godzilla first appears on the island on land. So I do actually like that, you know, even though it's painfully obvious once you see more of the suit and more of him in action, that is not the same suit from the water scenes. But I do appreciate what they try to do by making it somewhat seamless when they introduce the suit into the story. But once again, even though I know there's a lot of folks that really can't stand this suit and don't really like it, there are a lot of folks that actually do love this suit, like myself, my great friend, Gojo 851, Matt Jacobson, Mr. Fresh Vinyl himself, Richard Eso, my great friend, Eric Arrington, um, my great friend, and also David Ab Dotco. Um, there's just a lot of people, oh, from Screon.com, my, my, one of my, also my best friends, John Bumpus. As a matter of fact, this is his favorite Godzilla um, movie of all time. Um, so uh, there's a lot of people, aside from us, that really do appreciate this suit and this design. And I'll tell you the, the biggest reason why I appreciate this suit. And I believe I mentioned it just now. I believe that, in my opinion, the reason why I love this suit so much is because it was perfect for the story that was built around it. Okay. Um, I view this suit in the same category as I view Shin Godzilla from Shin Godzilla or the Burning Godzilla from Godzilla vs. Destroyer or the GMK Godzilla from GNK. With Shin Godzilla in particular, they wanted to make Godzilla as the most nightmarish, just horrifying looking Godzilla ever to present that story. So the story worked for that particular version of Godzilla. 
The same thing with GMK. In GMK, he was he was an unholy, rampaging, pissed off, evil demon serial killer, if you will. And the story reflected his look in that film. The same thing with Godzilla vs. Destroyer. Godzilla was dying in that film. That story is more so about the death of Godzilla. So that's why his look reflected that with the burning patches all over his body. And with Son of Godzilla, it's the same principle. Godzilla's look is in response to Mania. You know, they wanted to make Godzilla look more like his son. And I believe it worked. I believe it worked for the story that was built around that design. So that's really the main reason why I love this design. You know, I think a lot of folks are really just are taken aback by, by the design. And I get that, you know, because he doesn't look as awesome as he did, or at least sinister, I, would, I should say, in 62 or 64 or 54, you know, and they can't get behind it, you know. But for me, I absolutely can get behind this suit. I really can get behind this suit. Because at this point, Godzilla is no longer a rampaging, a rampaging city destroying behemoth. You know, he's still a threat, you know, to a certain extent, but he's not as sinister and evil and malevolent as he was in the early Showa films. You know, his character at this point has really evolved. And now, like I said, he's not a city destroying rampaging demon. He's not a straight up villain from 64 and 62. At this point, he has evolved into another new character arc that I think he pulled off really successfully, and that's him being a protective and caring parent. It showed that Godzilla can be all those different things. Me, being a Godzilla fan, and me loving the fact that Godzilla, my favorite characterization of Godzilla is him being a nasty, hateful villain. You know what I mean? Like GMK, Martha vs. Godzilla, Godzilla's a King Ghidorah. That's my favorite characterization or character art for Godzilla. But yet, I can still get behind this film and get behind this character art because Godzilla does come across, you know, that he can be all those different things, but also can be a great parent in his own right. And I really do enjoy that. I really do enjoy that part about this version of Godzilla and his look reflected that. You know, like this, like me, you wouldn't have worked with the uh, 64 design as his parent, you know, with guys are looking all mean or whatever, or the 66 for that matter, you know, so they had to make Godzilla in comparison to Mania, or at least more acceptable to Mania, where a lot of people can get behind the fact that these two are actually related look wise, you know, and I believe it worked. Once again, the main reason why I love this design and why I love this, love this suit is because that the story that was built around it reflected him looking like that. And that's what I appreciate most about this design. As a matter of fact, I actually appreciate this suit when they brought it back in 1972's Godzilla vs. Gigan. If you watch that film, they used that, this particular suit for the water scenes when Godzilla and Angras are on their way to Japan to fight King Ghidra and Gigan. And when they surface in Tokyo Bay to confront King Ghidra and Gigan, they used this suit. Now, it was the same suit, but they kind of like augmented the head a little bit where he looks a little bit meaner. But still, I still enjoy that suit, you know? even I even would say that they should have brought this suit back in 1969's Godzilla's Revenge, in my opinion. I think it could have worked there as well. Because in 1972, the suit, even though it was used for the water scenes, and even though I like it, the suit wasn't in the best condition, and that was five years removed from Son of Godzilla. So at this point with Godzilla's Revenge, it would have been two years removed. So the suit wouldn't have been that bad, at least in that bad of, of, of a condition. So I think maybe it probably could have worked with the, with the 67 suit for Godzilla's Revenge. And even though that's, that movie is pretty much criticized, or at least frowned upon because Godzilla looks keeps changing from film, from scene to scene to scene because they use so much stop footage. And some of the stop footage that they used for Godzilla's Revenge was for Son of Godzilla. So, like Son of Godzilla, where they used the 66 suit as well as the 67 suit, in my opinion, you probably could have plugged in the 67 suit in Godzilla's Revenge. So when they incorporate footage from Godzilla with the Sea Monster as well as Son of Godzilla and have this version of Godzilla fight Gabra, it could have been a little bit more, a little bit more accept acceptable, in my opinion. But my point is, I I just feel like there's a there's at least one more movie that this suit would have gotten. I wish this suit would have gotten a little bit more mileage because I love the suit that much. And once again, the reason why I love the suit is because it's reflective of the fun and cool story of Son of Godzilla. So maybe 
keep that in mind the next time you watch Son of Godzilla, or maybe I can't convince you to keep that in mind when you watch Son of Godzilla. If I can't, that's fine. Everybody's entitled to their own opinion, but in my opinion, this suit is awesome, it's cool, it's, it, it was very reflective of the story that was built around it, and I think it works. You know what I mean? So that pretty much concludes my review of the X Plus 30 centimeter Godzilla 1967 Rick Exclusive Edition from the awesome campus show of Godzilla film, Son of Godzilla. You have any questions, holler me down in the comment section or hit me up, hit me up on Facebook via Leslie P. Chambers. We definitely go from there. Yes! Woo! Such a great piece. Yes, it was a great, great uh, final note to go out on in 2018. Once again, this is a great upgrade from the 25 centimeter version. And there's not too much anything wrong with that version, but they just somehow made a good figure in that in that version and made it even better with the 30, you know? So if you're on the fence about getting this figure, get off the fence. If you love Son of Godzilla, if you love this design, you really need to get your hands on this figure. At the time of this recording, it is what, uh, January 19th, I believe. The last time I checked Hobby Search a couple of days ago, they do have still a couple more in stock, you know. I don't know how many, but they do have some in stock on Hobby Search. Now, it's just a standard. It just comes with Godzilla. The Rick, you may have to do a little bit more legwork to try and find one. Um, between the two, um, it just varies. If you got a fan of Mania, then I suggest don't get the Rick because you, you probably going to end up selling it anyway. Um, even though I do highly recommend you going for the Ricks, especially for the prices. Um, but either way, whether it's the Rick or the standard, you can't go wrong with this figure. The 30 centimeter Godzilla 1967 from Son of Godzilla. Once again, lots of stuff is coming here on the channel. My next review would be the 1968 Flying King Ghidra. Um, then I'm probably going to do the Death of Real 1962 Godzilla. Um, just a lot of stuff is coming here on the channel. But the next review will be the 1968 Flying King Ghidra. And also, um, keep in mind that I will also do an X Plus setup um, video devoted to Son of Godzilla. So that should be coming up like in the next month or so. Once again, lots of content is going to be flowing here on the channel, which will hopefully, hopefully keep us in entertain and keep us occupied for the next two or three months. So let's just sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride on Leslie Chambers College Reviews. In the meantime, get this figure. You will not be disappointed. All right? So I thank you for watching. I appreciate it. And I will see y'all again on the next figure and move review. All right? Y'all take it easy. <laughs>